Hi, I'm John Gilbert. I'm a professor of computer science here at UC Santa Barbara. I'm in the computer science department, but I work in a field called computational science and engineering, which combines computer science with a lot of other different engineering and science departments, making high performance computing methods and tools available for all kinds of scientific investigation. Hey, I'm Virol Shah. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Computer Science at UC Santa Barbara. We are primarily a research department trying to advance the state of the art in a number of scientific fields. We are trying to advance the scientific use of computers to understand the world at large, to understand physical phenomena, social phenomena, ecological phenomena, all, all sorts of things. My name is Brad McRae. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at the National Center for Ecological Analysis and Synthesis, or NCS for short. The mission of the center is to bring ecologists to, together to work on problems both in ecology and in conservation by synthesizing large data sets. My research focuses on connectivity in complex landscapes. The work that we're doing here will help conservation organizations, government agencies, and universities to better predict and understand how development, climate change, and other disturbances might impact wildlife populations. The main challenge that we face is that we, when we analyze a large landscape, we have to break it down into small grid cells for our analyses. Even with a landscape the size of Southern California, that can result in millions and millions of grid cells that need to be analyzed using sparse matrix techniques. Before we began working with STAR-P, we were very limited on the size of landscapes that we could analyze and the number of grid cells that we could handle. What STAR-P allows the user to do is, is process large data sets in this interactive time frame so that they can focus more on the science rather than worrying about the computation. The problem that Brad works with essentially starts out with a landscape. The landscape is segmented into a bunch of cells and then animals move on this landscape from one cell to another. With his original code, it typically took about a few hours to compute on a landscape with a few thousand cells and up to three days to process landscapes with a million cells. With all the work that we did, with all the, all the numerical and combinatorial techniques and using Starfy, we are now able to solve problems that as large as 40 million cells in less than five minutes. In the past, putting together a collaboration between computer science and computational ecology like this would be a really, really big thing. It would have a big educational component. It would need lots and lots of people working together just in order to get everybody speaking the same language and being solving the same problem. Here what we do is we simplify the tools and we simplify the, the language, if you will, the programming language enough that, that from day one people can, people can talk to each other. So my PhD student, Viral Shaw, who speaks the language of graph theory and parallel computing can talk directly to a computational ecologist and they can speak the same language. We see that in quite a number of fields that, that, that this idea that you can you can you can have everybody speaking a common language without spending all your time teaching each other what the words mean and how you make this actually work. The skill of programming a high performance parallel computer is incredibly rare and and difficult. What Star P does is it lets the scientists that are doing these computations write their programs using a system that they're familiar with, which is, which is this MATLAB programming language and system, and star P under the covers orchestrates all the different pieces of the computer working on all the different pieces of data. The goal of star P is to make parallel processing seamless for the user of interactive environments such as MATLAB or Python or R. The hope is that the user does not need to edit too much of their code and have it automatically run in parallel. That's exactly what we try to do with this application in computational ecology. Using STAR-P has allowed me to continue programming using MATLAB and take advantage of 
parallel processing without having to do the parallel processing coding myself. All of the coding is transparent, it's in the background, and I'm able to just use the same computer code that I was able to using serial versions of MATLAB. Our analysis time initially took several days just for a standard landscape. By vectorizing our code, we were able to cut that time down to hours. And then using STAR-P and being able to take advantage of our multiple processor system, we were able to further cut down our analysis time to minutes. Shortening the time that it takes to run a landscape allows us to run far more analyses in the same amount of time. It also allows us to run analyses on much larger landscapes and at much finer scales. That allows us to better predict connectivity effects on wildlife in vastly larger landscapes and also at a finer scale with more accuracy. One of the big benefits of using STARP was that we were able to combine combinatorial tools that I had developed along with numerical tools in STARP to actually produce this piece of software to do all sorts of fun things like find corridors for, uh, for conservation and, and you know, model gene flow in, in wolverines or mahogany or, um, or any other species for that matter. By using STARP, we have been able to move our research ahead much more quickly allowing us to address questions in much larger landscapes, model gene flow among animal populations, model individual movement among animal populations, model disease spread. And so we've been able to push this into new realms with new questions, and that's very, very exciting, both for ecology and for conservation.